In this lecture, I'm going to sum up a little bit of what we learned from the HR diagram um, and these four different categories of stars, the supergiants, the red giants, the main sequence, and the white dwarfs. And I'm going to talk for just another minute about main sequence stars. So we did notice that there were basically four types of stars as shown on the H di HR diagram. Um, and they basically seem to be categorized by size. Uh, we had the supergiant stars that were very, very, very large, giant stars which are pretty big. Um, the main sequence stars, which were 90% of them, and we found that while there was some range, they're not that different from each other. And then the white dwarfs that are little small guys. And this picture, which is from your book, sort of gives you a sense of the scale of these things. Um, it starts with a supergiant star, one of the most famous of which is the star Betelgeuse. That is how you spell Betelgeuse, and yes, that really is a star. It's in Orion. Um, if you stuck Betelgeuse down where the sun is, this dotted white line represents the orbit of Venus, and this represents the orbit of Mercury. Earth would be kind of here, and Mars would be kind of here. Basically, Betelgeuse would go out to the orbit of Jupiter. Uh, so. All of the planets in the interior of the solar system, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, would be inside Betelgeuse if we stuck it down where the sun is. Then zooming in, now it zooms in five times so that this is now the orbit of Mercury. If you stuck a red giant like Aldebaran there, um, then this is where it would be. So it wouldn't engulf any planets, but it's still pretty big. We have to zoom in 10 times again to get down to the size of the sun. And then we zoom in again 10 times and we get down to, the, to a white dwarf. Notice that a white dwarf is about the size of Earth. White dwarfs and Earth are about the same size. That's a really useful thing to remember. Supergiants and red giants maybe go out to the size of orbits of planets. Main sequence stars are about the size of the sun. White dwarfs are the same size as Earth in terms of radius. But these things also had some other things in common that we could see from the HR diagram. Uh, so supergiants obviously have very large radius. We found that they could be lots of different temperatures except for very hot. If you're up at the top of the HR diagram and you want large radius, you've got to be in the upper right hand corner and that's more or less cool ones. So these are maybe medium to cool but not very hot. One thing is that they are all at the very top of the HR diagram. That means they are very luminous. They give off lots of light, and that's just because they're so big. And it turns out that all supergiants have large mass. That wasn't in the HR diagram, but it is a fact. Red giants, well, again, they're going to be large radius, not as big as a supergiant, but still large. They are red, which means they're all cool. They're all on the right side of the HR diagram. And their luminosity is sort of medium to high, and it turns out a, a red giant can have any mass you want, um, all different kinds of masses. Main sequence stars have a radius similar to the sun. Some are bigger, some are smaller, but they're all within about 10 times bigger to 10 times smaller, so pretty close to the size of the sun. They covered the entire temperature scale, Every spectral class was on there. They went from the left to the right. They went from the top to the bottom, so they can have any luminosity, and they can have any mass. So main sequence is a very broad category. And then white dwarfs, um, we're going to see, are all very small. They're all about the same size, about the size of Earth. Uh, they're white, which means they're hot or medium temperature. They're at the bottom of the HR diagram, which means they're faint. And their mass, it turns out, for reasons we'll discuss in a later lecture, is all pretty close to similar to the sun. Now, here are just some important facts about main sequence stars. We're not going to spend a lot of time on main sequence stars. We kind of already did that when we talked about fusion and about hydrostatic equilibrium. But 90% of stars are on the main sequence. That's why it's the main sequence, is because that's where stars mainly are found. And the sun is right in the middle of the main sequence. It is a main sequence star. 
the fundamental characteristic of main sequence stars that unites all of them is that they are all fusing hydrogen to helium in their cores. We're going to see that other stars may fuse different things in their cores, or they may fuse hydrogen to helium somewhere else other than their core. But main sequence stars have in common that they are all fusing hydrogen to helium in their cores. And finally, stars do spend the majority of their lives on the main sequence. That's why 90% of stars are on the main sequence, is that stars spend most of their lives there. Um, they will become other things at other points in their life, but most of their lives they spend on the main sequence. And we'll talk about red giants and white dwarfs in the remaining lectures.